Hey coach, I just wondered, what do you think of all this switching around? You've gotten a couple players through the transfer portal and a couple players have gone. It's like everybody's got some new teams. What do you think of all this movement? Well, it's, it's a change. There's no doubt. It's, you know, I, I'll be honest. I, I worry about it. Uh, I know a lot of coaches that I know that I'm friends with. I've talked to them. I was on the phone with Conzo Martin yesterday, Matt Painter the day before, uh, Tom Izzo, uh, the week last week, late in the week. I mean, we're all, we're all skeptical. I, I mean, I, I told president Myers last night at the baseball game, I, I worry about college basketball in the future. And, and I know change is hard for everybody, uh, but and change is part of life. But I, you know, I still go back to uh, Coke and Coke Classic. You know, the, you know, sometimes people make bad decisions and they have to go back and and say, what do we do? You know, did we did we mess this up? And and for me, it's not. It's you know, we can deal with it. I, I I've told you guys, I, um, you know. I, it's just part of basketball. You want to stay in the game. You, you got to be flexible. You got to change. I think we've done a good job of, of finding some older guys that will help us. We lost some, we gained some, hopefully it's in, in a positive, uh, positive on our end. Uh, but I, I really worry about the players, uh, you know, the, the 99% of the players, the, the 1% that have that chance to play in the NBA you know, they're, they, they're going to have their opportunities, but the 99 that are switching, you know, we have some that have been at four schools, you know, some guys, I give credit to some guys, if they get six school or six years of playing, um, you know, you, you get, you know, for them, they can get, hopefully they're getting a, a, a regular, their undergrad and they're getting a master's and maybe something beyond that. And it's going to help them in the long run. But this, this new group that starts changing, our, our graduation rates are going to go up. Is that going to change? Um, to me, the thing I worry about is their, uh, their future where they have somebody to go to. Uh, you know, it, it, if you leave, keep leaving schools, who's going to go help you and, in the long run? And, and that's, to me, that's, I've said it before to you guys, that's why I got into business to watch young, young men grow and, and, develop not only as basketball players, but give themselves a chance to get a degree and network and give them chances to have a good life. And that's, that's what I worry about who you keep leaving schools. And I have guys, I have guys that I've coached 30 years ago that are still calling me and say, coach, can you help me with this? Can you, you know, do this or that? Can you call for me? I'm looking for a job, but those guys, I'm going to be loyal to them because they were loyal to us. And, and right now, uh, you know, where is that going to go? And, and that, that, that's, you know, the degree using basketball networking ability and that loyalty factor I, I worry about. And, and then the game itself, I know we've all talked about staying old and that's been a big thing that everybody has talked about, you know, how can you stay old? Well, now you can stay old by getting in the portal, but I think it's beyond that. Why did Baylor win? Not only were they old, what an average age, what, 22 or something, but they also were together. And, and that continuity, that being together, playing together, um, you know, it would be interesting how, how things uh, develop. You saw this year, and COVID obviously was different, but the teams that did not have a lot of experience, including ourselves, really struggled early, and it, and it took a while. So when you get – keep bringing guys in and trying to piece them together. You know, are you going to have that continuity? Are you going to be able to be a, an established good quality team and keep it going? It, it'll be interesting to watch. And just to follow up, what kind of team do you think you have right now, which could change some more, but. Yeah. And that's, and that's the other scary part that we've all, you know, coaches, our guys could come this summer and start workouts and still transfer. And, and go to another school. And, you know, so, you know, do you, do you coach them? You know, are you going to go and hug them all the time so they don't leave? Or are you going to coach them and try to have a good team? I mean, that's, that's the question you got to deal with. And, but I, I, you know, I think I'm convinced. I want guys that want to be here, that want to win, that want to be successful. And we'll get the right group. But uh, we feel good about our, our group. We had a, we've had a great spring. 
Uh, I mean, they've really been focused. They've really worked hard. It's been all positive energy, uh, a lot of skill development, a lot of time in the weight room. Uh, so it's it's been good. Obviously, we got five new guys coming in June, uh, and that'll it'll be different. But this core group that we have that finished the season that played well uh, down the stretch, uh, they've been great. And it's been fun to coach. We're in our last couple of days here, and then they'll they'll head home after next week. Um, but it, it's it's been good. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. All that talk about Coke and New Coke, and you're drinking Pepsi, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I just watched that uh, on the History Channel. The the it was the what the food that built America, and they talked. They had the Pizza Hut versus Domino's, and then they had Coke and Pepsi, and and how Coke and you know went to that new formula and it just kind of hit me. So, <laughs> well, well, I enjoyed it. Um, now, now that the, uh, you know, this dust has settled and you've added the, the transfers, how much better do you feel about your roster right now than you did when you started looking at guys last month? Well, you know, we, you know, first we wanted some experience and we, you know, Mark Smith was one that, you know, he's played in the NCAA tournament. Now you got two guys, um, you know, in, in Mike McGurl and Mark Smith that, have both played in. They're older. Uh, we know Mark. Um, you know, we recruited him actually twice. And, you know, and, and this this third time, we just basically said, hey, you know, Mark, we've recruited you. Either you want to come here or not. And you know what we're about. And we have a relationship. So hopefully that works out. Um, you know, we, you know, with the other guys we lost, we, we felt that, um, you know, we needed some kind of uh, uh, another point guard in the mix. And, and Marquise brings a dynamic guy that, uh, you know, would have been in the NCAA tournament a year ago, um, you know, with, with, with Little Rock, uh, if, they, if it wasn't stopped. Uh, he, you know, he, they had a COVID messed up the year this year, but he, he's, you know, explosive. Uh, he has, he's a little older. Um, you know, we, we, he knows about, you know, Nigel and Mike and, Mark Smith and you know he wants to just be part of it and be successful and experience it and so we're we're excited about that and then you know to add uh, you know ish late uh, it was kind of a we didn't know it had to be the right player for that last spot and he, he gives us you know again some experience he gives us uh, a versatile big guy that can shoot the ball um, uh, it just seems like a, a great young man and a hard worker. I, uh, John Curry texts me, who's at Wake, and just said, you're getting a great one. So I uh, felt very good about that. And then Max, you know, we finally were able to sign him. And I, I don't know if we we did a release in that, but, you know, he, he gives us some explosiveness, some athleticism, uh, versatile. Um, you know, he could play that forward that in, in today's – basketball the three four um and then obviously we signed Logan Logan early um and you know Logan had a, a great year um uh, you know he, he can big body can shoot the basketball uh, does a lot of things he hard worker wants to please uh you know so I, I think it's a nice mix with the guys we have um you know right now we can say we have competition obviously we've had injuries the last few years and I hope I hope maybe we're through that, but uh, hopefully now we have enough depth, even if we have uh, some injuries that we, you know, we have enough players there that to be successful. So uh, again, I can't say enough about how our guys finished. Um, excited to have Mike McGurl back. Uh, he's been, uh, he, he's just, I think he's just playing at a whole nother level this spring. And uh, we've been doing a lot of, you know, skill work, competition stuff and, one on one and two on two and and he he just and he's in the weight room extra and so uh, you know it, it just uh, you know Selton will be um, right now it looks like he's going to be gone part of the summer playing on the Angola national team uh, in the Olympic qualifiers so hopefully that's a great experience for him uh, obviously Nigel and Davion great uh, you know finish for the season for them and. 
uh, you know, it, it, now we've got to get Casey and Carlton healthy um, and, and Monty, you know, that'll be, they've made some progress over the spring. And, and our goal is hopefully to have those guys back as we get into June. So we, we have enough bodies to, to do some open gym and play and do some things we didn't get to do a year ago to get ready for the season. You guys are obviously going to be more versatile next year, at least on paper. Uh, have you thought much about playing small, going big, and how you'll you'll uh, work those lineup combinations yet? I think it, it we have options. I think that's the best thing. And I, I think the thing I've challenged our coaches about with, and we've talked about, can we have a system where we can make the easy transition from either playing big or playing small? And, you know, maybe a little, you know, a little different look. I think one of our worst things last year was transition. Um, our defense got better as the year went on. Um, I think we talked about it. We went from one of the worst, the worst in the league to I think we ended up six in a lot of categories uh, with our stretch down the end and, and our that last month of the season, it was one of the better defenses. So now you get your defense better. Now you got to finish in transition and that that'll be a key. Uh, but hopefully, you know, with uh, Mark Smith and, um, and Marquise, and then the development, continued development of our other guys, we can be better in transition. Uh, but, you know, you know, again, it depends on, you know, Ish, we haven't coached him yet. Uh, Monty coming back. Um, but I think we have that opportunity to go both ways. And that, and even with bigs, if we're, if we're healthy, uh, you know, Carlton and uh, Logan, you saw that a little bit with USC had great success. Uh, playing two big guys that were versatile out on the court. Uh, obviously, they they had a great run in the tournament. So, uh, I, you know, even though we small ball has been important and been su- probably more successful than anything, but USC kind of gave everyone a, a little different look that maybe it still can work. I want one more quick one with, with Marquise. Do you see him uh, – do you envision letting him have a, a green light to shoot from anywhere like he did at his old school? If he can make them, you know, <laughs> okay. it's just, you know, that's our biggest thing beside the transition, I think is the, you know, productivity and efficiency. And that's gotta be the thing. And, and we've talked, we talked a lot about Baylor all year. Um, they won it. You know, I, I mean, I said it back in December, they had a chance. They, I thought they should win it or had a chance to, um, and, you know, how do you become that right now? They're, they're, the, they're the standard. And, uh, you know, those guys took tough shots, but they made them. And they shot 40-some percent from three. And, and that's, that's kind of our goal. You know, not maybe just we don't have to shoot more shots, but be a better percentage. And um, I want Nigel to be able to, and Mike McGurl and Selton to be able to make plays uh, when we need baskets. But I don't, you know, I'm not sure we're going to come down and jack it. I mean, I don't think that works in our league. So, um, you know, it, it but, you know, I, hopefully a little more efficient and which will allow a little more freedom. All right. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. Yep. Uh, next question to Greg Palmero. Hey, Greg. Coach. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, you talked about relationships uh, with uh, Conzo Martin, obviously, and others. I'm wondering, as this uh, transfer period has unfolded so crazily and you haven't had a chance to have in-person visits with, uh, with potential additions, uh, I'm wondering how, how much those relationships have really come in handy, um, especially with, uh, with losing Deshaun, uh, Deshaun and adding Mark Smith. Yeah, you know, it... It, it, it was funny because uh, Conzo called me like on a Wednesday or Thursday and, and said it was early in the morning. I, I you know, I was kind of I was kind of surprised by the call. And and and, you know, at that time of the day and he goes, I just want to talk to you about days one. And um, and, and I you know, I, I can't again. I I did not want to lose him. Um, you know, he had his mind made up. I, I hope the best for him. Uh, one of the last things I told Dejuan uh, is that make the right decision, not the school, but the coach. 
because I think that was it for him, for his future. I'm worried about his future. I want him to make it. I don't want him to be somebody that doesn't make it. And uh, I, I told Zoe after, you know, he committed to him, uh, I couldn't be more happy that he's going to a, a guy that's going to care about him and, and worry about him for life. And, and that, to me, that's important. Uh, you know, Conzo talked yesterday about what he's, you know, when he's had discussions with the oversight committee and the different committees he's part of with the NABC is, you know, that coach Katie saved his life, gave him a chance in life. And, and, and that's why he's successful because of his coach and, and so, you know, played as a freshman, but, you know, he wasn't like, you know, Glenn Robinson dominating right from the beginning. And it took him a while, but by the end, he was, he was a really good player. And if his knee would have been halfway decent, he probably would have played in the NBA, but he also coach Katie, you know, stuck with him and, and made sure he got his degree and gave him a chance in the coaching profession. And now he, he's turned out well, and that that's what we talk about. That's what we're worried about. So I was happy for days one. Um, and again, when we talked to and then about four or five days later, Mark Smith popped up and I said, so we recruited him twice. What do you think? You know, he told me to, you know, he loved him as a young man. He had just had lunch with them and, uh, you know, to kind of when they said goodbye and, and, you know, I, you know, I, he was, he was very positive. So hopefully it'll work out for both of us, but the, you know, again, that all the transferring, I, I, I told, and we've talked about it a lot is, how do you make a decision off a Zoom call? You know, the relationship, you know, we've been fortunate that Shane is at, you know, at new Marquis from when he was younger and knew his brother, uh, had some relationships with Ish. And so it, you know, that, you know, it, it hopefully will help, but around the country, kids are making decisions that, you know, they're, you know, I'm not sure 48 hours on official visit, but a relationship you develop over a year or two usually gives you some, some idea of what you're getting into, uh, where a couple Zoom calls and I'm not sure it's going to help you. So it'll be interesting what happens in June. And I know we're up in the 1400s near 1500 uh, with the portal and uh you know, it'll be interesting once kids go to school. First, once guys go home now in May, how many still transfer? Because they wanted to work out with their teams. And then they get home and everybody says, oh, go try, find another place. And then then what happens in June? So, uh, you know, do we're just all, all we can worry about is ourselves. And I've told people, I don't know if I want to go recruiting in the summer because I don't want to leave our guys because the most important guys we can recruit is – the guys we have in our program right now. Um, one, one quick follow. Um, do you see Mark Smith uh, getting time at, at point guard? Uh, I know that was one thing that uh, that was mentioned out here uh, as, as being part of, of his decision. Uh, do you see him at point? Well, I, I, I hope he has an opportunity to handle the ball and make plays. And and that that's important. Obviously, he's a great shooter. He's experienced, got the big body. Uh, but I recruited him. Uh, I think I might have been one of the first ones to offer him, to be honest, way when he was – because he played baseball and didn't get much pub. And I, I remember going there to watch him. Uh, and then, obviously, he blew up then. But one of the things I thought he really did well was pass the basketball. And that – you know, I talked about our team and the challenge uh, for our coaches. Uh, you know, we, we want to emulate – what Baylor did where they had three guards that all could make plays. They all could, they could all handle, they could all pass. Um, and that, if we're going to be what the vision I want to be and what I think we can be, then we'll have, you know, not only Nigel Marquise, but we'll have Mark, Mike, McGurl, Selton, everybody handling the ball, making plays, and it'll make us much more effective. And last for me is uh, Luke. Obviously, he had a, a rough, rough go with injuries this year. Um, and uh, you said, obviously, and if this were regular times, he would have redshirted uh, yep. this past year. But what do you see next for his development? Well, I was good. I just kind of thought about it. I, I'd been buzzing through the players. I forgot to bring him up. And 
Um, you know, again, I, I can't, you know, his courage to come and play. We were talking about the other day, you know, he played basketball two times or two weeks over a, about a six, six month period. And then I stick him in the game against Texas against three of the best guards in the country. Um, and you know, it was, it wasn't almost fair to him, but, uh, he did not back down. Um, I, I loved his toughness. I loved his, his, his defense was the thing that really surprised me. Um, and now he's just got to get back, you know, get, get some reps, get in the gym. Uh, he, he's, he's a gr great young man. He's got a little ornery, orneriness, competitive spirit to him that I love. And, uh, you know, I hope he can be that first little guy that can come in for us and, and give us some good quality minutes um, and give us that stability. When you got, you know, guys coming in and out, he can he can give us that different look. Thanks, Coach. All right. Um, next question to Michael Goins. Well, Bruce, you mentioned Montavious. Murphy, you're a little bit earlier. What does a healthy Montavious do to transform your roster and, and your overall team's playing ability? Well, you know, I think the thing, it's a guy that played as a freshman, hit, hit a, a big basket at, on a road game at UNLV the year before as a freshman. And um, he, he was probably as good as anybody on the defensive end for us. He picked up things. Um, really well. Even now, he just started getting back into some live action. He has some real good, good basic instincts on defense. He does things. He has a great feel. And, uh, you know, if we, you know, that part of it, experience defensively, maturity, um, you know, but he's got to get, you know, he hasn't played much basketball and, and had even much time in the gym over this last year. So just him getting confident, uh, shooting the basketball, feeling more confident, figuring out some niche to score. I think the other thing he really does well is he passes the ball. Um, it was one of the things that we struggle with uh, from, from those big guys, you know, from any of our big guys this year. So he can, he can bring a lot of different things to our, to our roster. What is his current health and what's the pro projection for the beginning of the well, season? Well, you know, he had surgery, uh, you know, did this in, in Houston, did his classes on Zoom, started the recovery there through his uh, physical therapist and doctors there, got back here. It was in March. Um, and then we've made the progression. You know, it's basically how many shots a day to, to running in the pool to uh, we got the other couple other different running machines uh, that he that he's been able to use. Um, and then just this week was the first time, as I mentioned, a little bit of live action. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're limiting his, his reps in that, but he has been on the court and I, I'm sure for him, he just got to feel good about having that opportunity to get back in there and sweat a little bit and, compete and but it's going to take time there's no doubt uh but you know hopefully go home and feel like he can get in the gym and do open gym and then come back and be ready to go in june and what's your comfort level with your with your bigs with your posts with your uh or position with the addition of masood yeah i mean it you know you got to feel good about davy on what he did um you know i i was I'll be honest, when Casey went down, I was really worried about how Davion stepped up. Um, you know, Casey, it's been a slow recovery. Uh, you know, it, it, we actually kind of went back and started over with him after the season was over, and he's he's been as limited as anybody. Uh, Carlton is, is starting to get going again. Uh Kind of went back again after the season and let him rest and recover a little bit. Uh, you know, I, you know, we'll, you know, as I said before, we, that's going to be important, how th their progress. And then, you know, Logan, I know I'm sure if you watch, he got unbelievable skill. I mean, it's shooting a three ball, passing the basketball, natural instincts that I don't think any of our guys have, but 
you know, as we all know, freshmen, especially freshmen, big guys, sometimes it takes a while. Um, you know, we talked about Monty, and now you add Ish to the mix. Again, experience, uh, a young man that scored, what, 31 points in, a, in the ACC game. So he's got some skill. Uh, every time I call him, he's in the gym. So he, he works hard. He loves it. Uh, great young man. Um, and then you got Max gives you that versatile guy that can go either that three or four if you played small ball. Uh, Max has had a, a surgery right now and is uh, won't be really coming getting back until June. So, but you know, I, I hope we have good depth. But again, till we get them all healthy and get them all here, we'll we'll know more as we get into June and July. And are you looking forward to a little better team cohesion ability through the summer versus what it was last year? Yeah, there is no doubt. Um, I mean, it, you know, we've talked about it. What we went through last, you know, we had, there's so many unknowns last spring, not even having guys here to when we brought the guys back late June that quarantined for 14 days, limited three, four guys in the gym at a time. You know, we were scared. We were afraid to have them in our office. That was probably October, November before we even started watching film with guys. Um, you know, it, it, you know, to have that opportunity, no open gyms, uh, you know, I, I, I got to believe that, you know, that sense of normalcy of open gym and coming in the gym, they, they can come in at night. Uh, uh, our, our police actually came to the gym because after the season, we opened it up again now after a certain time and we had guys shooting in there and I guess it wasn't communicated to the campus police. So they, they were like, who the heck is in the building? And it was our guys. So, um, you know, that, that's what you want. You, you want them in the gym, you want them playing, you want them excited, um, doing team things. Uh, you know, we took them to a movie the other day for the first time in a long time. Uh, you know, we're, we're working on getting a paintball thing here going just fun team things where they can feel like they're normal students. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, next question to Tim Fitzgerald. Hey, Coach. Um, you you made such incredible progress on the defensive end of the floor last year, and uh, you're bringing in five new guys, so you kind of have to put that those principles back together with the new group. But does it help that three of them have Division One experience? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt that that it helps concepts. Uh, Obviously, Conzo has been a pretty good defensive coach. So Mark's been in that system, um, along with, you know, being at Illinois, having that that background. It, it, there's no doubt when you they know how to guard things. I, I'd still go back to my my days with USA basketball a couple summers ago and Tyrese Halliburton, Isaac Likele, uh, Reggie Perry, uh, guys that have played before when we talked about certain concepts, how to guard and stuff. You know, they they knew what I, we didn't have to sit there and, and talk them through it where the young guys, they had no clue what we were talking about. And uh, so it, it 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 helps. There's no doubt about it. Um, and we have you know, I think we with Selton, you developed a defensive stopper uh, along with Mike. Uh, you know, I, I think rim protection is going to be important uh, if we can get better at that. We started getting. Uh, started getting steals at the end of the year, which we've always been pretty good at. Now we just got to finish the transition. Uh, Marquise gives us another guy that can put pressure on the basketball. Uh, Max gives you a, he, Max just, he can guard. I, I promise you can, he, he can guard people even as a young guy. So I think you got a good mix and you got to, we, the, the older guys, we had so many new guys last year that, we had to start over with the system because I know you almost every call during the year, you talked about our defense and the help side and seeing the ball and all those things. And, you know, again, to our staff's credit, to the players credit, we got, we got pretty good at it. Now our, our main group knows what we want so they can make sure that we're doing those things and the other guys just got to kind of buy in and learn. Thanks, Coach.
Yep. Next question to Kellis Robinette. Um, I know it's probably too early to think about anything like a foreign tour like you had l planned last year, but do you have any yeah. anything planned to help the guys play this summer? I, I would love to do it. I just, there, we're still, um, I think they're one financially and, and I've donated the money for our team to go in the past. So I'd be willing to do that, but you know, we're still trying to fight our way through the financial part as a, as a, you know, athletic department, as a university. Um, and then just still the unknowns about going overseas, I would anticipate, it would probably be next August uh, that we'd end up going. But, you know, we talked about a little bit about Canada because you can go there. Um, and that that would be the only thing that, you know, if we scrambled to do it. But I, I haven't heard of any other teams yet making the move, uh, saying they're going to go this year. And uh, we know a little bit about the schedule next year, Wichita State, the tournament in Kansas City, Nebraska. What's your ideal plan for the rest of the slots you got there? Well, then you got the Big East Challenge. You still have the SEC Challenge. Um, you got a pretty good nucleus uh, to start with, uh, uh, with, with those games. And then, obviously, we got to get enough home games uh, for our season ticket package. So just a mixture. We're – I think there's, you know, we, we're going to have that five or six games that are home games to mix in with the, you know, the ones you mentioned um, and I mentioned, and then we probably got one kind of, I guess, game we'll have to decide at the end uh, which way we go, which way we go. Okay. All right. Appreciate it, Bruce. Thanks the thing, for your time. When, when we've analyzed the net, it, sometimes it's it, it's not if you play teams if you watch Texas Tech I think they're a prime example uh, they I think they have such a high rating because not only do they beat the bad teams but they beat them soundly and their defensive efficiency and offensive efficiency is so high so they get wins and they get points for that uh, I I've, I've talked to actually the NCA about the to me, it's a little bit of flaw in the system, but uh, you know, it it you know, it's it's kind of that, you know, do you play those teams? You know, because the other guys, you know, Oklahoma Lon has always had great success playing some, you know, the kind of mid majors on the road, and we getting wins off that and getting a high rating also. So, a little bit of mixture with both of those.